Hi everybody, Kenneth G. Hasty here once again, KennethGHasty.com. I'm a business growth consultant and I'm here to help you by giving you some free video training to help you be more effective, whether you own the company, whether you're a salesperson, but basically to help you come across better to your potential customers, your current customers, and ultimately to make more money. If you like these, please retweet them, please uh, forward them, like them, etc. Share them with your friends, we'll keep doing them. So today is called email writing tips. So what does that mean? You know, we get a lot of emails, right? Emails become the new communication tool for everybody, you know, for business. But, you know, I look at emails that I get and right away, um, some people start them off and they're, they're starting with a lecture, you know, and they're telling me all about something and it, so I'm just kind of, eh, <laughs> you know. So how do, you, how do you make an email effective? Well, let's take a look at some ideas here. For starters, um, use a warm introduction. Don't, don't just put their name, or worse yet is, uh, you know, to whom it may concern, or, or uh, just nothing. Um, use something warm, you know, the dear, dear so-and-so, and then start off with something that is friendly, you know. Hey, I hope you enjoyed your weekend, you know, anything like that to put a positive, friendly tone on your email. Don't just start off and say, hey, you owe me 50 bucks, or, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever it might be, you know. So use, use a warm intro, and you're much more likely to have them continue to read the email. Because there's so much email coming in, a lot of times, you know, if somebody reads like I do, I get shortly into it, and if I'm not getting something, you know, the substantive right away, I ain't next, you know. So use something warm, personalize it, make it about them. Then, Shorter is better. You know, some people want to pontificate on emails. And most people reading emails are doing it in a short segment of time. They're reading multiple emails. So if they open your email and it looks like gone with the wind, they're, they're going to be like, nah, I'm not reading that. And once they put it off, it just keeps going down the list and may disappear forever. So, you know, short, sweet, you know, to open up some communication or, you know, agree for further communication. But don't, don't get crazy with the length of it. Maybe, maybe three paragraphs, but not, not more than that if you can avoid it. Okay. Use a conversational tone. You know, talk like you're talking to them in person. So then they're reading it and they're hearing it like you're talking to them in person. So don't try to impress them with your business acumen, et cetera. Just talk to them. Just say, you know, hey, you know, I noticed this or I saw that. I want to share this with you. Whatever it is, you know. Um, don't try to BS people in there and pontificate and sound so, you know, just, just these days they get so much of that. What works the best is just a, a personal conversational tone. Check your spelling. I repeat, check your spelling. The, there's nothing worse than getting an email, a business email to you or, or from you, actually word, is worse, to a major potential client. And let's, you know, you typed it out and you know, three or four words are misspelled, your grammar's off, and suddenly you don't look like someone that they probably want to do business with. And the thing is, though know, none of us are great at spelling anymore because we use, you know, word processors like Word. So what I like to do is I type out my emails in Word, if they're important, then, and almost always I find something, then I cut and paste that back over to my email so that I know that it's correct. Also, it's really important to make sure that you know the correct spelling of their name. Don't wing it. Double check it, triple check it. Because if I get an email and it's got my name spelled wrong right up the, right up the first, it, that puts me in a negative down spiral. Uh, also, if you spell the company name wrong, it, it shows like you don't care, like you're just pumping out emails that day and you just happen to slap that on there and didn't bother to check it. So it's important. You know, people like their name, people like to hear their name. Uh, make sure you spell it correctly. Double check it, triple check it. Same thing with their company, okay? And use Word then and for everything else and then cut and paste it if it's important. All right, then in your email, you don't want to just ramble and come to an end. So they look at it and they're like, okay, so what? You know, you want to have a call to action, a clear next step, you know, whatever it is. You know, why, why did you send this email? Was it just to hear yourself type, <laughs> you know? No, it's to get some kind of an interaction for whatever reason. So if you're trying to sell something, it's probably a call to action to, you know, for further communication or to take an order or what have you. It may just be if you're, you know, emailing somebody about a, an event, you know, say, hey, you know, hope to see you there, you know, um, you know, whatever it is. But, but have some kind of call to action so that you can um, 
um, show a reason there's for your email. You're not just wasting their time or yours. Okay. Then when you go to sign off, I recommend using a warm signature. So many people say nothing, you know, or just as regards, you know. Well, regards, that's professional or sincerely, but that's kind of old school, you know. I, I like best regards because it, or, or warm regards if it's somebody I'm close to, because it, it adds that little extra step over and above just the cold business regards, you know. It, so it doesn't sound like it's coming from a computer. It's, it's actually coming from you. And if, if you're um, saying goodbye to somebody, how, I mean, how often do you go, regards? Probably not very often. You might say, hey, best regards, warm regards, you know, whatever, or whatever it may be. But you're probably not going to go, regards, you know, but that's what you're doing in your emails, I'll bet, right? So think about that. Okay, then at the end, contact information is important. You know, you get an email from somebody and it says, call me, but there's no phone number. Well, how do you, you know, then it's a pain. You got to look it up. What do you do? You, you go to your next email, that goes to the bottom of the stack, may keep going forever, you know? Also, there's a trend people want to get their smiling face picture in their email or the company logo in their email, but there's a risk to that in that some email servers block that out and just put a red X. So now somebody's reading your email, they just see some red X's there and it looks unprofessional. So my recommendation in, in most cases is don't put your company logo or don't put your photo in your email. And even though a lot of times it'll go through just fine, the ones that it doesn't, of course, would be the, the big one you're trying to impress. And they're like, what's this? Guys, you know, it must be a form email or, you know. So anyway, you want to have the best impression. Just like any communication. Email, remember, email is a personal communication. You want to make it personal. You want to start personal. You want to end personal. And then have some substantive meat in the middle of it. A clear call to action. And you'll get a lot more success from your emails. So anyway, hope that's helpful to you. And uh, email writing tips. Kenneth G. Hasty. If you like these things, it's kennethghasty.com. You can communicate with me. Um, also, if you're interested or know people that are interested in getting business growth consulting, well, I do that too. So, kennethghasty.com. Meanwhile, if you like these, forward it and retweet it, like it, what have you, and we'll see you again soon. All right? Thank you. Take care. Bye.